He starts taking out the trash, doing dishes. And I turned into like a monster. I was like, Steven, get the car. Hi everybody, welcome back to our channel. Huh, poo -poo. It's our channel now. Today, I wanted to film my video talking about my birth experience with Noelle, my second baby. And sorry for those of you guys who like are not here for like the mom type of videos, but I mean, this is my life now. So this is Noelle Mariah, her name has a vibe to it okay word, word of the day is vibe her name has a vibe to it because she is born in december her due date was actually december 9th but she got here a little bit early a week early on december 2nd her birthday is 12 to 21 which is the same forward and backwards so it's like a special little day hi hi mom so if you guys saw my last video about this little one come here chunky baby yeah, if you saw my last video about this one, it was like a horrendous birth experience. Although it was totally worth it because I love my baby. Mama kiss. Ooh! Yeah, I gave birth to Gia October 3rd, 2020. And then I got pregnant a couple months later. I had like a pretty easy pregnancy. I worked my whole pregnancy up until probably like three weeks before I gave birth. Maybe even two weeks before I gave birth. And that's just because... Uh, I, I would have kept working, but I wanted to like do things around the house and like set up before she got here. And so with Gia, I had an emergency C-section. And so when I got pregnant with Noelle, which she was a little surprise baby, um, I told, well, my doctor asked me, she was like, do you want to do a VBAC and um, deliver vaginally or do you want to have a C-section? I was like, um, I'll take the C-section. <laughs> With Gia, my whole plan was, I was kind of open to anything, like, because you can't, you can have a birth plan, but then you just... You never know what's gonna happen. Like, and every birth story is yeah. unique. So yeah, with her, I was kind of like open. Like I was like, oh, like ideally I would like to deliver vaginally, but if I have to have an emergency C-section for whatever reason, <laughs> then I'll do that. You know, Gia. <laughs> but yeah, with Noelle, since I had gotten pregnant so close together, like I read about that your uterus could rupture if you um, if you have a VBAC like so close after having a C-section. I mean, just having, just getting pregnant at so close, you know, like so like back to back after having a C-section is like not ideal. Um, ideally, I think you're supposed to wait 18 months before even getting pregnant, let alone giving birth, <laughs> okay? So when my doctor gave me the option, I was like, and also because I was so traumatized from my first labor experience, I was like, let's not, let, like, let's just not even do all that. Let's cut to the chase. Like, <laughs> girl, like I never want to experience that in my life. And if you haven't watched that video, then go watch it. So I scheduled a C-section for her due date. Actually, her due date was December 10th and I scheduled my C-section for December 9th. The day that I went into labor, like I had Braxton Hicks contractions, but they didn't really hurt, you know? I know a lot of people for some, like they're generally painless, but for some people like they're annoying or they hurt for me, it's kind of like whatever. Um, and so the day that I went into labor, I was in full nesting mode. I was like, all right, you know, the countdown is here. I, I go to Sam's Club, stock up on groceries, like stock up on wine. I went to I went to Total Wine with Gia, with my humongous belly and Gia in like my baby carrier. I had to like put her on the side and I'm sure they were looking at me like, damn lady, but it's like, I'm not gonna be pregnant forever, okay? I was feeling like more and more contractions, but I was like, uh, like, I don't, you know, they're just Braxton Hicks. And so I went home, went, went on about my night. Like I was in bed, like texting my friends and just like, whatever. I woke up at midnight. My Braxton Hicks were like, they're getting like more and more intense. And I was like, am I in labor? Like I was really questioning, like, am, am I labor? I text my mom and I start Googling signs of true labor versus, um, you know, just Braxton Hicks contraction. I read that like, you should like take a shower 
and see you know if it goes away then it's not true labor and then if it if it gets worse then it is true labor i got in the shower and i was like oh my gosh like this is actually getting painful it just like progressed so fast like, it was totally different then with Gia, I started labor at nine o'clock in the morning. It took like a whole like 24 hours for it to get painful. It was just very slow. With Noel, it started off, I took a shower, then it was like boom, boom, boom. Like them contractions were like coming, girl, okay? And I was like, oh my gosh. By this time, it was like excruciating pain. And mind you, maybe 20 minutes had passed. And I was writing down how fast my contractions were and they were like two minutes ap apart. And so I called my doctor or the doctor that was on call that night and I'm like, this is what's happening. Should I come in? Um, I'm scheduled for a C-section on December 9th. And she's like, well, why aren't you delivering vaginally? And in my head, I'm like, bitch, bitch, I am in labor right now. Like this baby, like I might have to deliver vaginally. Don't be like giving me these type of uh, decisions to make in my state. But I, of course I didn't say that. I was in Gia's room. Gia sleeps with me and my husband in our room. Well, all the kids, all of all of us do now. But um, she, at the time, it was just Gia. She even woke up and got concerned because she heard me. She came into the room because I was like in on the floor of her bedroom on the phone with the doctor, screaming and stuff. And then Gia came in and she was like, mm? like that. she like touched me. She was like, mm? like looking at me, like, are you okay? Like, are you good? I was just telling Gia, I was like, uh, mommy poo poos, mommy has to poo poo, <laughs> mommy belly hurt, you know, because I didn't want her to like freak out the doctor was like okay well um just come in by that time my husband he's like still in bed and just i'm not gonna say he was chilling but it's like i'm about to have a baby so then i'm like steven we're gonna have to get up and go to the hospital so then he starts packing his hospital bag which mine was already prepared girl if you have been in labor before you know every second that passes by is like excruciating and on top of that like i'm scared girl i'm scared i'm like oh my gosh i do not want to have to deliver this baby vaginally i'm not mentally prepared for that i don't know if i can do that and so my husband like i said he's like packing up his bag he starts taking out the trash like doing dishes and i like turned into a monster i was like steven get the car i put his bag in the car i put my bag in the car my husband is usually the person to do that kind of stuff i don't like i don't carry luggage <laughs> i'm about to drive myself to the hospital and leave you here i put the baby in the car you know i'm like let's go like we have to go like this child is coming now we get in the car drop off gia at my mother-in-law's house go to the hospital oh <gasps> that was like the longest drive of my life like, every bump in the road even like turning a corner like, i wanted him to rush but then i was like if he would drive too fast it like made it hurt worse even walking from my house to the car i know the neighbors heard me because i didn't give up okay like i was screaming we get to the hospital as i was walking into the like walking towards the front of the hospital i had to pause and like hold like a pole or something out there and i was just screaming in front of the emergency room entrance a guy comes out and he's like uh do you guys need a wheelchair and i was like yeah so we got a wheelchair checked in went straight into labor and delivery i forgot what it's called but you go into this room where they basically kind of like see like oh how far you're dilated the way that i was having contractions and how close they were together i was so scared i was like oh my gosh like, this baby's gonna come out soon so then they checked me to see like how far i was dilated and bitch, I was only dilated like one centimeter. <laughs> I was only dilated one centimeter. And in my mind, I was like, oh my God, like I can't go another nine centimeters. Like I can't do it. Like I can't do it. I don't think I'm built for that. I don't think I'm built for that. If it's this bad, this fast, like imagine, like imagine. I don't think I have like a low pain tolerance, but I definitely don't have a high pain tolerance, okay? And I was like, oh my gosh, like, there's no way in hell I would be able to get to nine centimeters. If I was a woman and like before modern medicine and I had to deliver like naturally, no medication, no nothing, like that makes me like want to cry. Like even thinking about that, like what women had to do for freaking centuries before modern medicine and some women choose to do it today. I just don't think that like if I would have lived back then, I don't think I would have made it. Like I wouldn't have made it, okay? <laughs> They gave me like this shot in my arm. It wasn't a um, an epidural, but it was like a temporary, like just to hold me over kind of thing. And I was so grateful. And I was so traumatized from my last um, labor too, where the epidural failed, okay, you guys? Like I had no epidural. I had 
Well, I mean, I tried to get an epidural, but it failed like three times, which even the anesthesiologist was like, this has probably only happened once in my entire career. So I happen to be that one freaking person that this happens to. And so I was all scared. What if the epidural fails again? That's also why I decided that ahead of time that I wanted to have a C-section because I was like, let me just not even play. But yeah, the shot that she gave me worked. And then I was like, okay, but you know, that, all, that only works for like a couple, it doesn't work for very long. You know, so then, um, you know, the doctor who was going to deliver my baby, she came in and she, again, she was like, is there like a reason why you don't want to deliver vaginally? And I'm like, because my epidural failed last time, I don't want to take that chance. I already had one C-section. I might as well just freaking keep it going. And I know the recovery that like that comes with a C-section. And for me, I was so terrified ahead of time. I was like, oh my gosh, I don't want to have a C-section. Just because like the thought of like my abs being opened and like, uh, you know, just like the whole surgery like freaked me out. I was like, I don't want to do that. But afterwards I was like, oh my gosh, it's not even that bad. Some people are like, oh my gosh, I'd rather deliver like 20 babies vaginally than ever have a c-section again but for me like i was up i was walking i was like like it was like it was honestly like not that bad for me but you know i'm glad that i'm grateful that she gave me the option because i know a lot of doctors uh like they kind of i or so i've heard that a lot of doctors will like pressure women into having a c-section for whatever reason i don't know if it's like a money thing or like i don't know they gave me the epidural and then they prepped me for surgery and everything and i went in and my husband he put on scrubs he went in with me and then Hello. yes do you remember you remember you were there yeah. and she's destroying my makeup right now but like it's what i have to do to distract her she loves makeup no no boo -boo. i don't want to put that on right now thank you gia I mean, it's makeup that like is probably expired anyway because I haven't worn or bought makeup in freaking years. But Gia, 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 go, go put that on your doll. Go put that on, on mouse. Go put that on Minnie Mouse and I'll just deal with it later. So yes, they wheeled me into surgery and um, I was awake this time because with Gia, I was fully knocked out because they didn't want to risk um, whatever anesthesia not working so they fully knocked me out with Gia this time I was awake which also was like freaky like having a surgery while being awake the doctor that was on call at the time she actually had the doctor that I wanted to go with she was like in there assisting her and like guiding her I was like oh my gosh this is like perfect this is like such a freaking blessing and so, you know, leading up to that, they were like, is there any music you want to listen to? And I was like, um, yes, Mariah Carey. You guys know I'm a Mariah Carey fan. And, you know, her middle name is Mariah. I would say the whole thing from beginning to end was seriously like five to ten minutes, okay? I didn't feel a thing. I was awake. My husband was next to me. My husband was refusing to look at, like, what was going on there, which I don't blame him. And I was just trying to, like, stay focused and stay calm because it's just a weird sensation. Like, you just feel pressure. And then there's a point when, when they're about to take the baby out where, you know, the doctor was like, okay, you're going to feel, like, a lot of pressure in your chest. Like, almost like somebody, like, pushing your chest it's weird the baby comes out ah! and then i just heard wah, 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 wah. and it was my little baby girl and she came out and she was oh my goodness she was so pale with the big old red lips you had a big red lips a big red lips when you came out and then they cleaned her off and everything and she was born to always be my baby can you guys imagine can you guys like how perfect is that always be my baby that's the song that you actually came out to you know because mariah carey was playing the whole time that's the song that you came out to so it, and then her her birthday is just so special 12 to 21 so this is a special baby right here both of my children are so special boo boo but she, Gia, she's an artist. Like she's just doing her artistic thing right now. She was seven pounds, four ounces, born at 5.46 a.m. And yeah, she's just so wonderful. So that was my labor story. And I did want to talk about this. I want to talk about the fact that she had colic and I wanted to talk about, um, yeah, that's basically it. But I was in the hospital for an extra two days because like her temperature was really high, maybe on day two or something. <laughs> And they were like, oh, her temperature's high. We want to put her in the NICU. And, like, I freaking lost it. I was like, can't we just, you know. Because they, they had her, like, double wrapped in, um, 
like swaddled in two swaddles and then when they initially wheeled me into like the recovery room i felt like it was hot in there like the heater was just on blast and i was like whatever they had her double wrapped and i was like i know that's why she's hot they're like oh well um you know we need to wheel her in we need to put her in um in the NICU just to be safe because she could have an infection and whatever and like i just knew there was nothing wrong with her but then like i was so paranoid like i told you guys in a previous video about like you know um i was paranoid that like if what if i refuse to put her in the NICU and then they like call cps and have me um, arrested or whatever or have her taken away because i'm like medically neglecting my child and so she went into the NICU for two days like I, that felt like her when they first admitted her in and like they put all these needles and stuff in her i don't even like to think about it because it's so sad and i'm trying uh, not to think about it because uh, i just feel bad i feel especially bad for moms whose babies have to be in the NICU for like months or weeks like it was heart breaking they're like yeah we're gonna put her in the NICU for 48 hours and give her antibiotics so she's like hooked up to all this stuff and she's so little and then at one point because they, she had an IV in her hand and like they had to switch the I like after like 24 hours they had to switch the IV from like this hand to the other hand because they're like oh like her hand starting to get swollen from like the from you know being poked and I was like that is heartbreaking like when they were like hooking her up and everything like we got to like walk with her in there and like I was like digging my claws into my husband the whole time because I was like I couldn't stand the pain it was just so bad and heartbreaking and I had Gia at home and she's never like G like she doesn't I don't have anybody like really watch my kids at all okay and I don't really have a lot of like help here like she's never spent the night without me ever okay ever and so then she's like with my mother-in-law which I'm grateful for my mother-in-law is an angel but it's her first time ever not you know sleeping like with her parents and then i don't want her to i didn't i was worried about gia because i didn't want her to like be sad you know so it was just a lot it was a lot so she was in the NICU but then i was like you know what i told my husband because he was like staying in the hospital with me i was like you know what go home today because yeah like i like i said i think this is like at the 24 hour mark i was like don't stay in the hospital with me like i don't like not that i don't care but you know like go home with with gia like be with her because i do not want her to be sad and I'll stay here with the baby. Like I stayed in my room, but like I'll go into to breastfeed Noel, and like I was pumping, you know. So my my main focus those first forty eight hours was just like pumping, building my breast milk supply, nursing her, making sure everything's okay, holding it down for my baby so she could go home. And so yeah, after the forty eight hour mark, they tested her, and of course she didn't have a freaking infection. Like I freaking knew. Like it was like bitch. Like. It's freaking hot in this room and you guys have her wrapped in two swaddles like it's freaking hot like that's why she's hot but you guys won't let me like wait it out another couple hours because then you guys probably just want to make more money or something you know but that's just my conspiracy theory <laughs> i wanted to say this like this time around like with my birth like the doctors boo -boo. Hi. is that your makeup oh you look nice Ooh, don't put that in your nose no no okay so <clears throat> this time around the doctors were amazing um you know my all of the nurse, nurses were amazing from that's what it's called triage not not concierge <laughs> all the nurses from triage to recovery like everybody was like amazing and my lactation consultant was like an angel okay Boop, boop. Why are you doing that? You want an attention? Okay, here, sit with mommy and you could have an attention. Okay. We're going to we're going to do this together. You can have an attention tool, okay? So, it was so I did not breastfeed Gia. I wanted to, but then like I was completely ignorant to like breastfeeding, okay? And I had a lactation consultant come in with Gia, but I felt it was like her well she was very like okay so you do this this and this and whatever you know it was very like quick and like i felt impersonal and also i felt like she was like awkward it's hard for me to like explain but like it's like bitch why are you awkward like i'm the one sitting here with my freaking tits out it was just kind of like one of those things like what's your what's what's your deal like why are you acting like weird around me so then i didn't know what i was doing with gia like i literally didn't know I went home, I was like super engorged and I didn't understand that, that and like my nipples were super sore and just like, I, I didn't understand the whole breastfeeding thing. So this time around, I did my own research with Noelle 
because I was like determined. I was like, I want to breastfeed Noel. And so whatever, I had my own research, but then also the lactation nurse who came in, like, oh my gosh, she's so freaking amazing. I wish, like, I need to like send her something, even though it's like months later. <laughs> But seriously, like she was so helpful and she's like, please like ask me any questions. Like, and she, I, you know what? I like the type of person and I feel like I'm like this at work. Like I like the type of person in their profession where they're very hands-on and they're like, no, you need to do this. Like they're very, for lack of a better word, like aggressive, if you will, with their, um, in their profession. Like that makes me feel like, okay, you know what you're doing. And like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like I need your professional help. And she is very much like that. And so, yeah, like I, breastfeeding was like everybody, all the nurses were like, oh my gosh, you're a pro. And I was like, really? <laughs> but that's because I, because of my lactation nurse and on top of that, um, my, just doing my own research, you know? And so I'm going to quickly talk about colic because I don't want this video to be too long, but so she started to have like crying colic episodes around three weeks and it was freaking horrendous. Like. If you are a parent of a baby with colic, it is not for the faint of heart, like her screaming bloody murder. And and that, so that happened, like the first time it ever happened was on Christmas night. I just thought it was like, okay, you know, we had people over today, like there's a lot going on, like maybe. Gia, yeah, where did you get this bottle from? This bottle is probably 500 years old. I don't even know when I made that. Yes, but then she kept having these colic episodes like every night and I, I looked it up because I'm like, this isn't normal. And they were like, oh, like from what I read, it's like, oh, you just, um, like they just grow out of it at like three or four months. And I was like, this can't be it. Like this can't be it. it. So then I started to do further research and I, I read about like cutting out dairy, like if you're breastfeeding, cutting dairy out because it can mess up their system and like cause them to have colic. And so finally she had blood in her stool. Like I changed her diaper and she had blood. And I was like, okay, this, okay, there's something wrong with her. And and I'm actually grateful that I did see the blood because then it was like, okay, this isn't just like, oh, it's witching hour, it's normal, whatever. Like if you guys could see her cry, you it would break your heart. Like the way that she is crying so hard, like you would know that that is not normal. And so I went to the doctor the next day and she was like, okay, well, yeah, let's try to see if it's a milk protein allergy. So um, either you can, you can cut out dairy and like while you're, you know, while the dairy is leaving your system, which usually takes around two weeks or so, um, you can keep pumping or you can just latch her on. Like you don't need to stop breastfeeding while you're um, cutting it out and you could, or you can uh, you know you can give her a hypoallergenic formula so i was like okay you know what? i'm not even gonna breastfeed through this whole um thing because i wanted her to have relief immediately but i did cut out dairy and i continued to pump because i did want to continue to breastfeed her but for me i know a lot of moms there you know a lot of moms and a lot of people say like you know like my doctor said you don't have to stop breastfeeding but it was to that point where i'm like i'm not going i'm not putting my child through this for another night like, I'm not doing that. Like, I'm not fucking doing that. And it was causing me to have postpartum depression, like, legitimate depression. Because, like, as soon as, like, 3 o'clock sometimes, or even, but, but especially, like, 5 o'clock hit, it's like, this girl is about to be screaming, and I don't know how to help her. Like, I don't know how to freaking help her. And I was like, I'm not, I'm not putting my kid through this for another night. So then I just continued to pump while cutting out dairy, and I... So that night, I, I gave her a hypo, hypoallergenic formula. I gave her Alimentum. And literally, literally that night, the colic stopped. Like, completely stopped. And so I was like, okay, she had a milk protein allergy. And actually, Gia had a milk protein allergy too. And I had to give her Alimentum. But she didn't, she didn't have colic, like, crying episodes. Like, same thing with her, like, around six weeks or so or around a month, I saw blood in her stool. And the same thing happened with her. But with Gia... Like she just didn't cry or anything like that. She was just acting normal. And with Noelle, my poor sensitive baby, holy whole belly. And also she had she had really bad cradle cap and like um, also like baby acne. And Gia had baby acne too, but like it went away like within a couple weeks with Noelle's. It just seemed to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And I'll post a picture in this video. And I started to wonder like, 
is this just baby acne because it's not getting any better and I realized and as soon as I switched her to the formula and cut out dairy the rash went away like it was all on her face and she was just like not a happy baby and it made me so sad because I was like see look how happy she is now I was like dang like she's just so different like she's not happy like she cries a lot she's so sensitive like it could even be like if I hold if, if I were to hold her like this she'd like scream or if I would like just anything like adjust her outfit or cover her or uncover her did a little bit like she would scream for everything and i was like oh my gosh she's just so sensitive but now i realize it's because her little belly was hurting huh Mama. see she said yes her belly was hurting and so we switched formulas and then she's been good ever since so any moms out there if you're dealing with colic oh my gosh my heart goes out to you like seriously i was crying every day and every night just from being sad that she was screaming like that like it hurt it hurt me to see my child like that but then also because i just didn't know how to help her like i didn't know what to do but she's back on track she's very healthy she's thriving and also i want to let you guys know and i'm still breastfeeding her now i do supplement with formula because i didn't i didn't pump as much as i should have and so my supply went down a little bit but i supplement with formula now i feed her formula um during the day and i nurse her at night because ain't nobody trying to get out of bed to make a bottle ha <laughs> your mama and we co-sleep we're a bed sharing family i'm a gentle parent see look oh she loved me Popo, do you love me <gasps> you do do you love mama okay you want to go outside okay she's like um okay time to go outside and we were supposed to go to the store today but like she has her war paint on okay. actually i don't care i'll take her i'm proud of my baby okay. I'm proud of you, no matter how much war paint you have on. Also, no matter what you have to do to feed your child, whether, I mean, this goes without saying, but don't feel bad because um, I breastfed Gia. I mean, I well, I breastfed her for like a day. <laughs> no, but I formula fed Gia. I breastfed and uh, I breastfed her exclusively for six weeks. And now I'm breastfeeding and formula feeding and both of my children are healthy, happy, thriving gia over here is like a freaking genius okay she's really advanced seriously she started walking early she's like talking saying words she started saying her abcs and counting and she is a formula baby okay so yes but then also if you want to breastfeed then breastfeed because you know it's also good for your child of course <laughs> anyway i'm gonna end this video now that was a story of noel and her name is her middle name is mariah because of course i'm obsessed with mariah carey and you know she's born in december is mariah carey's month the, the queen of christmas but really the queen of everything the queen of everything so you're named after a living legend an icon and guess what you're an iconic baby uh oh you okay Anyway, that is it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. And so I think this, so let me know what else you guys wanna see here on my channel. I'm definitely gonna, I, I actually wanted to film a hair video cause I need to do her hair. I'm gonna film a video showing you guys her hair routine. Um, I was gonna do it today, but then I was like, let me just get this video out there because Noelle's growing every day and I don't want it to be like, oh, this is my birth story. And she's like, you know, a year old. So yeah. Um, that's it for now. Gotta go. Boo -boo. Come say bye. Bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Bye. Say love you. Bye. Oh, look how bad your lip is. Let's go put ice, okay? Ice. See, she knows how to say ice. What other word do you know? Do you say mama? Do you say, well, I don't want to say D-A-D-D-Y because then she gets all excited. Daddy. Yeah, he, he will be home later. Okay? Okay. Okay. All right. Bye. Blow kisses. Do it. Go. Okay. Bye-bye.